I took in my abused niece. I'm a woman and my nephew, Josh, is quite spoilt. His parents, my brother and sister-in-law show blatant favoritism towards him over his younger sister Lou. As a result, sadly Josh has grown a little entitled. He also is quite mean to his younger sister because his parents never believe her when she tells him what he's done to her stuff. Now, I'm usually very strict and when the kids are with me for a weekend, Josh is usually on his best behavior. Now, Josh's birthday was yesterday. Lou had a spelling bee last week and she got first prize. Her parents brushed it off but I was very happy for her because she spent hours learning each word and I was very proud. So when I took the kids day before Josh's birthday so he could pick out a gift for his B-day, I got Lou a stuffed animal as a you did great. Josh picked this game that he's been wanting. The birthday party was yesterday and when I went to their house, Lou had been grounded and was not allowed to attend and the two friends she had invited were also sent back home. I thought it was extreme and asked what she had done. Turns out that Josh and her argued over the TV remote and Josh went to her room and destroyed her stuffed animal that I gave her and told her she didn't deserve it. Lou screamed at him and my brother got angry with her temper tantrum and had her pick up the pieces of the stuffed animal and throw them in the trash all the while she cried. She was then grounded. BTW, Josh's best friend was the one who spilled the beans to me and also told me that Josh goaded his parents into the punishment. I was furious and refused to give Josh his birthday present telling him he didn't deserve it for being mean to his sister. I also told off my sister-in-law and brother that they're growing insanely cruel towards their young daughter. Now my family is pissed that I refused to give Josh his birthday gift. So, am I the asshole? TLDR, nephew picked on sister and I refused to give him his B-day present. Edit, I have picked up my niece from my brother's house this morning. I called him and told him if she's being so rude to her brother, then maybe she should stay with me a couple of days to clam down. I got her a massive teddy bear which she's keeping in my house and I took her out to get McDonald's so she's smiling. But I am looking for a more permanent solution. Update 6 days later. It's been a hell of a week. There was a lot going on as well. As you can tell from my other posts, I'm in the middle of switching careers so I simply don't have the funds to support my niece. And by that, I mean no one is going to give me my niece to foster because my income is low. I'm a freelance romance writer and that doesn't really generate a lot of income. I say this because I did seek out advice from social services in my country, and they just shook their head at me. But I'll get to that later. On to the actual update. I did end up taking my niece with me for a few days and I sat her down and talked to her once she was calm. There were a lot of things that were happening in that house that I was not aware of. My nephew bullies her and my brother thinks it's funny when she cries. A few months ago, my niece had an accident and fractured her left arm. I was told she slipped down the stairs. She is clumsy so I thought that was that. Turned out her brother pushed her down the stairs as a prank and my brother laughed while she was screaming in pain. I verified the story from a neighbor who told me that she ended up taking her to hospital. Her father was apparently shouting at her to stop making a racket when she wouldn't stop screaming in pain. I lost it at that. I asked her if her mom knew. She said yes. Now, my childhood was pretty dark but not like this. I called my parents and asked them about this incident and a couple others and at first they hee hawed. We don't know, blah, blah. And then my mom admitted she knew and that it was just kids being kids. I just saw red at that point. This whole week I've been gathering any bit of evidence I can find. Finally, I invited over my brother and his wife. I told them that if they didn't get their shit together, I was posting everything on social media. I was going to email it to their companies, friends, whatnot. At first my brother was furious and when he tried to attack me, I pointed towards the camera I have in my living room. I was so angry that I felt like I was numb. I knew that this would destroy my relationship with my entire family but they left a little girl screaming on the bottom of the stairs and my brother laughed. I can't get that image out of my head. I told them I could either call the social services in our country and get Lou taken from them, or they could give her to me. The problem with this threat is that if I went the social services route, I would lose Lou as well. I told them if they don't want a daughter, they can give her to me. They can pretend she never existed. I was just speaking very quickly at that point. I don't even remember what I said. I would take over her expenses, etc., except for her health insurance and school fees. I told them they would never have to look at her again. I just kept talking. My sister-in-law started crying of how I was taking her child from her. I admittedly got angry over that and reminded her she wanted to abort Lou when she was pregnant. I was legit angry crying at that moment. I wanted to hit them. My brother was just silent. He was actually considering it. I told them it was better than having their dirty laundry aired in public because if it did, both kids would be removed from their house. It was blackmail but I had no options. They said they'd think about it but Lou is with me for now. 
my sister-in-law was pretty nasty about it too. In her words keep the little SL. All in my language off. I don't know how she can refer to her daughter like this but honestly I don't give a shit. My friend is a lawyer and he's told me to get a voice message from them that Lou is going to stay with me. My sister-in-law said this over the voice note. Lou hasn't mentioned going home. She doesn't talk about her parents. Yesterday, she and I went out and brought this lavender color paint, and we painted my entire guest room for her. I have decided to pick up more projects so that I can start saving for her. I did have some money set aside for a potential college fund for her, but I'll be picking up more work to save more and give her a comfortable life. I did get calls from my parents, shouting at me. I closed the phone on them. The only person who is supportive is my cousin. He said that if social services do get involved, he can take Lou in and I can move closer to them or something. I don't know, Lou is just quiet. She's happy sometimes and sometimes she's just quiet. I fear she suffered more abuse in that house than she's letting on. My lawyer friend recommended a child therapist so I've booked a session for Monday. It's been three days and no call from my brother and sister-in-law. My parents call every now and then to yell at me but they yell at me either way so whatever. I feel like this might work because both brother and sister-in-law saw the post I had written out as a draft with pictures and evidence. It was extreme enough that they would suffer damage at their jobs. And news channels in my country eat this shit up especially if it happens in an educated household. I don't know. I know blackmail is wrong. But I don't know what to do. Update you guys have made me feel from being alone to having an entire community behind me and that is such a reassuring thought. To all those who offered to send Lou gifts and hep out with clothes etc, thank you so much. It's a very touching offer but I do want to let you know that my friends have been spoiling Lou, buying her gifts, taking her out. She's got at least 10 stuffed animals alone including one massive life-sized one from me and one from my very sweet neighbor from across the hall. She loves cuddling them both and has named them Boo and Who. She thinks it's funny as do I when she runs down the hall screaming Boo Who, let's play divided by. And for those who offered to help me out with my career transition, those who sent me roadmaps and offered to tutor me themselves, or even share their learning accounts with me, God bless you. I will reach out to most of you guys if I run into hiccups, but I just started crying when all of you kept reaching out. But I'm planning to do a tech degree from Treehouse and do small courses and certifications alongside. But thank you all so much. I've not even gotten to all the messages yet. About the GoFundMe account I've been asked about. As much as I appreciate the offers, the thing is while I am not crazy rich, I do have some savings and will keep working to increase my income to give Lou a comfortable life. My friends have gathered around me and have given their kids clothes, toys, etc. I've not given Lou everything because I know things are changing for her right now and I want to take it slowly. Also, my sister-in-law's parents sent me some money yesterday and her mother visited this morning. She didn't say anything but she just stayed for an hour, asked Lou if she was happy and gave me some money. She said she would keep sending money. Lou's maternal grandfather didn't reach out but I suspect his wife might be fond of Lou. She's very sweet and non-confrontational. TBH I've never talked to her before, she's very quiet. But she asked if she could visit again, and I said, only if I was home. She was okay with that. Lou's parents haven't reached out but Josh called this afternoon, wanting to talk to Lou. It sounded like he had been crying. I felt bad and I told him he can visit on the weekends as he always done. Lou and he talked on the speakerphone for quite a while, and he was telling her about the baby rabbits they have or something. I was just keeping an eye on Lou. Lou didn't seem upset when she closed the phone. She's at that age when you really want to get along with your sibling. I would really prefer if I can build a better relationship between the two. That's all that happened so far. I just wanted to make this post to thank everyone who has and is still reaching out. And I guess I want to reassure you all that things are getting better. From the way Lou's maternal grandmother was talking, I think she's confident Lou will be staying with me. And I did tell my parents off. I told them that if they want contact with their only granddaughter, they should be grateful she's in a safe environment. I also added that they should be happy that Josh now has his parents' full attention. My mom shut up at the first part which makes me suspect that they were aware of other things happening in that house. Lastly, I talked to my lawyer who set up an urgent medical examination for Lou. I don't want to get into it but nothing happened to her of any sexual nature. She has bruises here and there which have not faded but aside from the fracture in her arm, there's nothing that suggests anything untoward happening. It's a huge relief but Lou was all shaken up by the examination so I took her to get ice cream and let her watch two Disney movies back to back. She has to go back to school from Monday so I think she'll be fine. Update. It's been a minute. Sorry for the sudden silence. My inbox has been overflowing and I haven't touched it in a while. 
Also sorry for the tiny heading which makes no sense. God, I'm tired. I wanted to give an update considering how many of you reached out and asked and offered help, advice and everything under the sun. All of which I'm very grateful for and probably why I'm writing this post. So, a lot has happened since my last post. I don't even know where to begin. Lou has been removed from my care. I guess I should start from this point. They took her away four days ago. Social services. She's with my cousin and she's called me crying. Multiple times because she wants to come back. I wasn't allowed to accompany her because they think that I might be a danger to her. I'm talking to another lawyer, a very good one. He reached out to me on Reddit, actually, and it turns out he's a friend of a friend's and was able to deduce who I was from the posts. I was wrong when I thought my brother would back down, and I was an idiot for thinking he would give over Lou so calmly. I'm going to try and follow a timeline. The legal process is being handled but I'm upset and I guess this is a rant post, and a self-pity one or something. Because I can, T stop crying. Five days ago, I was home with Lou. She was watching a movie and I was working when the power cut off. We have scheduled hours here when the light is shut off but that wasn't in the schedule. I wasn't worried too much. My laptop was charged and I let her watch the movie on my laptop. I didn't really realize at that point that without the electricity my security cameras don't work. Long and tedious story short, my brother had turned off the breaker. He broke in. I shoved Lou into my room and made her lock the door. He beat me up. I think he would have killed me if my neighbors hadn't heard the commotion. Her father was home and he barged over. He got my brother off of me and my neighbor called the police. This is where things got messy. I was bleeding. My face is still bruised and I can't put my weight on my left leg. My brother claimed that I had kidnapped Lou and was sexually abusing her and Josh and he was here to get her back. I had evidence that they had given Lou over willingly and when it came to abuse allegations, it was Lou's word against her brother and parents. Yes, apparently Josh parroted those words. The two policemen who showed up seemed suspicious when Lou kept clinging to me, refusing to go. I don't know how I was functioning in that moment but I managed to call my lawyer who dealt with most of it. I had to be taken to the hospital. It looks bad but I'm fine-ish. To all those who kept telling me to record conversations etc, thank you. His allegations and my sister-in-law's words about Lou made a weak case. But it was enough for social services to get involved. They removed both Josh and Lou because I started talking. I had evidence, loads of it and I shoved it down their throats. I was still in my apartment at that point. I hadn't left for the hospital. I couldn't. Lou was crying. My lawyer was on his way. If I had gone I was scared they'd give Lou to my brother. I filed charges against my brother and the SS person was supposed to come day after but I had to go to the hospital. The police accompanied me and let me keep Lou by my side. I don't have any brown bones so I was discharged the next afternoon. I would like to point out that my parents visited and tried to take Lou with them but the policeman who was with me wouldn't let them. I was also protesting. I have to skip stuff here because I'm mentally drained right now. But the gist is that four days ago, I got a visit from this lady from SS who said that because of the allegations, they have to remove Lou from my care till the investigation is complete. My cousin stepped up and took her in. My parents took in Josh. This is ongoing. I don't know why they did this. I'm shaken beyond belief. I'm tired. I can still hear Lou crying in my ears. I don't know why. I wake up terrified at night thinking somebody is in the room. I've been sleeping with the lights on. A friend is sleeping over ever since this whole thing happened. One of my friends got me a small generator for my apartment which I can use to keep the security cameras running and the lights if the electric D is shut off. My sister-in-law is telling everyone that I have her children. My parents have called me but I've not answered. My lawyer wants me to go in for some evaluation. My brother is in jail because I pressed charges but I heard that my parents are going to post bail. My life feels like it's gone to shit. Edit. Just want to say that right now I know this post sounds like me 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 but I feel like that right now. Lou is upset but she's safe with my cousin, his wife, and kids. She gets along with her cousin so I know she'll be in good hands. Update, small. This is a small piece of good news. The SS lady came over this morning. She said that based on all the evidence her department has received and the interviews they have conducted from neighbors and teachers, they are confident my brother and sister-in-law's claims are baseless. It's pretty damning evidence. The biggest factor was that they took both Lou and Josh and had a child psychologist evaluate them. They don't show signs of abuse and Josh ended up admitting what his parents had told him to say. Both kids have now been permanently removed from my brother and sister-in-law's care. SS lady found it disturbing like many of you how sister-in-law referred to Lou, and they are considering terminating parental rights. That's what she said. The case is still going to be investigated further but since the accusation was verbal and not a filed report, she says it should be fine. 
I'm now allowed to visit Lou and I'm taking some DIY craft stuff for her and her cousins and we'll stay over for a night. My cousin has been really supportive throughout which makes me feel better. I spent an hour FaceTiming Lou and she was happier. I set up a small shop online to sell these digital designs when she first moved in with me and she and I had been spending hours making them together. She's very artsy so I know she enjoyed it. She kept talking about her and her cousins have been drawing pretty designs and all three of them kept popping onto the screen. It just showed me that having her there long term might be the best solution. My cousin has mentioned that if things go the way they are going, he and his wife might consider adopting Lou. There, s more to this but while it's a good thing, talking about it makes me a little sad so I'm just not for a while. Both he and his wife gave really good reasons which make sense. My brother lost his job which is something I didn't mention in my last post. Not just because he went to jail but because I blasted both him and sister-in-law on social media, tagging their colleagues. That didn't go over well with my family. My parents showed up and had a lot to say. They didn't so much as ask me how I was doing physically. They kept saying I had destroyed my brother's family because I couldn't leave well enough alone. My lawyer was over at the time and he took great pleasure in kicking them out. So, yeah, that's where things are standing right now. I have a feeling I might never get Lou back but the family that she is with might be the best option, financially and emotionally. I did book a meeting with a therapist today. It's going to be next week. A lot of you pointed out that I might be a little traumatized from the break in which is true. So, yeah, I don't know much about Josh. I know none of this is his fault but a part of me resents him which isn't fair. I haven't reached out to him and I don't want to. My friends are telling me that once this whole thing is sorted, he will need someone by his side and if he stays with my parents, he'll go down the same path as my brother. I think they're suggesting I take him in when the time comes. I don't know. I don't want to. I can't forget how he told the SS that I had us abused him. So, a semi-good update and sad. My cousin will come pick me up in a couple of hours. I got some DIY glass paint kits for the girls and some beads and strings for bracelets. Update, about niece and nephew. So it's been a while since my last update and I was pondering over whether to make this or not but I got a lot of requests for one so here goes. My name is cleared, legally, from every angle. Surprisingly it didn't take that much time. I had a sit down with Josh a few days ago and by that I mean. His school is near my house and I found him in front of my apartment building when I came home from my doctor's appointment last week. I didn't want to be alone with him so I asked my neighbor and her dad to linger about and I called my lawyer. I know I keep turning to him for every sneeze but I didn't know what to do. After the accusations, I simply didn't want to be alone with him. There was a lot of crying. I get that his entire family unit has been destroyed. He's feeling insecure in a way. He can't see his parents. For some reason, my parents have been blaming him for what happened. That pissed me off. This happened because they did a shitty job of raising their own son. Josh asked if he could stay with me instead. Now the SS lady who is in charge of this case wanted to keep Josh and Lou separate for some reason. My lawyer called her to tell her what was happening. She arrived at my apartment within an hour. I have to say you hear shit about these sort of people but this lady is super sweet. She listened to Josh and then to me, privately. I expressed my concerns. However, she said that it might be better to have Josh stay here than my parents. Now that is something that has me uneasy. I told her that and she told me that if I have security cameras inside, I should get them in every room if I am worried. But the child psychologist working with Josh has said he's under too much stress. His schoolwork is suffering. He's not sleeping well. He feels safer here, despite everything. So now Josh is staying with me. I'm being normal with him but I guess I kind of messed up. When he tries to get a hug or something, I move away. I found him crying day before yesterday about this. I feel like shit for it. I told him to give me time and that I do love him. He's shaken beyond anything and he used to be loud and brash and now he's none of those things. He has circles under his eyes and he's always tired and just quiet. I'm talking to my therapist about it and he told me to let him in bit by bit and that he faced his own sort of trauma. I've started being more physically affectionate like I used to be and that seems to make him relieved. It's just been a week so I hope he gets better. A lot of you told me to leave him be but when these two kids were born, I was there. I was very involved in their lives. He's asked about Lou and if he can see her but when I said not yet, he seemed to understand. He drew a card for her but I'm holding on to it for now. His psychologist says he feels guilty. There's a lot of guilty inside of him and he's not dealing with it well. I took him to the movies today. It was something he had been waiting for for a while but he just slept through it all. I'm worried but his psychologist tells me to give him time and love. My parents were pissed by the way, as was my brother and sister-in-law. I got phone calls from all of them. Sister-in-law showed up at my house. I'm considering moving. 
It's just not safe. My entire family is losing their shit. I have apparently destroyed their reputation. An entire family, and etc. Lou is good. Lou is thriving. A two-parent household is good for her, like many of you said. She used to call a lot but those calls have lessened over these past two weeks. Which is good for her I guess. She's adjusting. My cousin and his wife adore her. Her cousins like having her there. I started therapy. It's going okay. My leg is better and my face is looking less like a child went at it with crayons. I still have nightmares. But my focus is on Josh right now so that has me distracted. A note from your reposter. Seeing some questions in the comments about the time frame. Remember they aren't in the US. Original poster describes their home as a third world country. Also, it doesn't sound like this is a final, official placement. The kids have to be placed somewhere immediately where they are both physically and mentally safe. It doesn't seem odd to me that they had an immediate kinship placement. Editor's note. Between the last post and this new one, our original poster posted a few more times about changing careers and struggling with depression. Update, niece and nephew. I've been getting so many messages for an update. Lou has settled in with my cousin's family quite well. Phone calls have decreased from her end but when I do check up on her, she's thriving there. I feel like I'm a reminder of her worst times and that's probably why she doesn't contact me much. I'm happy for her. It's better she be safe and happy than look back at her past which I'm a part of. Her school has been changed. My cousin and his wife have started the legal adoption process. I was trying to send her money every now and then but my cousin told me that I don't have to. She's not using her Etsy account all that much either but she gets pocket money and I got her a small Mickey Mouse money box to save money in. As for Josh, he's going to be removed from my care soon. He's doing well with me but his therapist says that he too needs a fresh start. I have family in another city. They have a son around Josh's age. They reached out to me and asked if they could take Josh in. They've heard of everything and I think they want to help. I've taken him to visit them twice so far. I've explained things to him so has his therapist. The thing is that I can't take custody of him in the legal sense because I'm single. I mean I can. But the legal hula hoops I have to go through are going to take time and the past might be rehashed which won't be good for him. Also, the SS lady who's been with us throughout considers this the best course of action for Josh. Like I said, Josh has been doing better now. But with everything that happened, his school friends know about what he did and he's lost friends. Nearly all of them. When I mentioned him potentially being adopted, he asked if he would go to a new school and be able to make new friends. I think that's what he wants desperately. He's changed as well, quiet, depressed. He misses Lou but not their parents. Lou misses him as well. But the damage to both of them is of the kind that they need to recover individually first. His therapist is adamant he not be in touch with his parents or grandparents. Or even Lou for now. From what I've been told, Josh went through a different trauma but since I'm not a legal guardian, he can't share any details with me. So, I think, in another couple of months, Josh will be gone from here as well. If it's the best decision for him, then that's what I'll do. I've been teaching him how to write letters and post them. My dad taught me when I was young and I used to love it. Josh also enjoys doing it. He's written two letters to his therapist who encouraged the idea. He promised to write me letters once he's gone. Since everything, his social media presence has been erased. For his safety, I've been in a weird place. Things have been hard. I ended up applying to a graduate job position. A couple of them, I just wanted to leave the country now. Once Lou and Josh are settled, their therapists want to minimize my role in their lives. Anyway, I got rejected from all of the jobs that had me down for a while. I got a cat though. Once Josh is gone as well, I don't want to be lonely. If I have something to love and care for, I think I'll be okay. My cat thinks she owns me, though. I'm going to finish my certifications, keep applying for jobs, outside of my country as well, and inside. Maybe something will come up. It's so easy to just give up when the going gets tough. And it's so easy to not see everything I've been blessed with and focus on the negatives. I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to be positive about the future. My parents did reach out to me. Not to yell at me this time but just to talk. They looked older than they are and weary. My brother and sister-in-law got a divorce or they're in the process of it. Brother was arrested when he broke into sister-in-law's house at night. He had some stuff with him. For some reason, sister-in-law was expecting him to and she called the police, locking herself in her room. Brother's been arrested again. My parents haven't bailed him out this time. I never asked why. The whole thing is a mess. My parents asked to see Josh and I refused. I told them why. I said a lot to them. They didn't argue this time. Just listened and left. I didn't want to be a part of this drama. I miss them because they're my parents but too much has happened. 
sister-in-law has not reached for her kids even once. There's an row against my brother and he's not allowed to approach me or the kids so I've not heard from him either. I think Josh and Lou will soon be happy and well settled in their lives, and more importantly, loved. All in all, for them, this is as happy of an ending as it can be, given the circumstances. I'll be fine, I guess. I'm trying to focus on my certifications and see where they take me. They have a cat now. Just wanted to tell everyone that again. And she's really cute and vicious which makes me happy. Last update. First of all, I want to thank everyone who has been here for me during this tumultuous journey. You offered love, advice, well wishes and everything from the sun to the moon and I'm grateful. I know I barely reply to messages but know that I have read all of them. To all those who offered help I appreciate it, but I have never been good at accepting help. But the gestures touched me. You all made me feel like all I had to do was reach out and someone would hold my hand and that meant a freaking lot to me. For me, writing out these things helped. Venting out to all of you when I couldn't see past my own nose was helpful in a way you might not understand. It's been a terrible couple of months and my life has changed a lot. And I have this community to thank for that as well. For the update, Lou is thriving which is great. Josh has also left. He's settling in with his new family. Both kids have my number and know I will be there for them when needed. But I'm not going to focus on my life, lose weight, try to become active, focus on my data analyst courses, focus on my writing, maybe self-publish in the future. Who knows? I'm 29. I want to travel, work on myself. The children are happy or will be, hopefully. And that has me at ease. I made this update because I know all of you have been part of this journey and sometimes some journeys need to be clearly wrapped up with a bow. Fortunately, Josh and Lou will grow to be strong and emotionally intelligent individuals. I wanted you all to know that. I won't be making any more updates for them now. I'll still be on Reddit but this chapter is closed now. I want the kids happy and I think they will be now. And maybe when they're older, they might find these posts but that is a long time coming.